Hi, welcome to Redox Reactions Part 4. My name is Dr. English and today we're going to be talking about how to write a net ionic equation. Specifically, we're going to be looking at what is a net ionic equation, how to write a net ionic equation, some practice, how to balance a net ionic equation, and then a little more practice at the end. So what is a net ionic equation? A net ionic equation is an equation that includes only the atoms and the ions that are changing oxidation states. So we're going to look at some steps of how to write this type of reaction. Here's a chemical reaction below where it's 2Al plus 3CuCl2 yields 2AlCl3 plus 3Cu. The first thing that we're going to do, as per usual, is assign oxidation numbers. So aluminum by itself is going to be zero. Copper, if I uncrisscross it, is going to be plus two. Chlorine is going to be minus one. Over on the product side, again, if I uncrisscross this, aluminum is going to be plus three. Chlorine is going to be minus one. And again, I can always check myself by saying, you know, minus one times three gives me minus three. And this is going to be plus three because there's an assumed one here, so that's got to equal zero then the copper by itself is going to be zero. Then I need to go through and see what is changing oxidation states and what isn't. So I can look at this and say aluminum's going from zero to plus three, so that's gonna be involved in our net ionic equation. Copper's going from plus two to zero, so that's going to be involved. But if we look at the chlorine here, the chlorine has a charge of minus one on the reactant side and minus one on the product side. So we're gonna call that a spectator ion. It's not really going to change. Therefore, in our final net ionic equation, that's not going to be involved because we're only looking at what is changing oxidation states as we go from reactants to products. So then I need to look at my equation and saying, all right, what's being oxidized? What's losing electrons? So Al is going from zero to plus three. So that's going to be oxidized. So I'm gonna bring the coefficients down with me. So this is going to be two Al zero yields two Al plus three. And we're losing a total of six electrons because there's two aluminum atoms here. Each aluminum atom as it becomes an ion is going to lose three electrons for a total of six electrons lost. Now, if the aluminum atom is undergoing oxidation, that means the copper ion must be undergoing reduction and gaining electrons. We're gonna, I'm gonna bring the coefficient with me. Three Cu plus two, gaining some number of electrons, will yield three Cu zero. Now we have a copper ion becoming a copper atom. Each copper ion needs to gain two electrons to become a copper atom. And there's three copper ions here. So three times two means that I'm going to be gaining six electrons here. So I can see that charge has been conserved. The number of electrons lost will equal the number of electrons gained. I want to cancel the electrons and add the two reactions together. So what I'm going to do here is I'm basically going to put in what looks like a little stair step. So like this and this, and that's gonna help me cut the two half reactions in half and identify what's on the reactant side and what's on the product side. The next step is to cancel the electrons. Six electrons lost, six electrons gained. Those electrons will not be involved in our overall net ionic equation. Finally, I'm left with two species on the reactant side over here and two species on the product side over here, those are the things that are going to be involved in my net ionic equation. When I rewrite this, that's all I'm going to be including. So it doesn't matter which goes first, so I'm going to put 2Al0 plus 3Cu plus 2 yields 2Al plus 3 plus 3 Cu zero. And that is my net ionic equation. Again, it is just showing what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. So starting from the top, we had a general chemical reaction. We assigned oxidation numbers. We identified what was being oxidized, what was being reduced. We added in our stair step. 
we canceled our electrons, and we finally wrote our full net ionic equation at the bottom. Let's do another example of writing a net ionic equation, and this time we're going to start out with a word equation. Potassium reacts with zinc sulfate to form potassium sulfate and zinc. I know that potassium is just the symbol of K. Reacts with is going to be a plus sign. Zinc is Zn, and when it's part of a compound, it's going to be plus 2. I know from table E that sulfate is SO4 minus 2, so these two charges are going to cancel each other out, and I'm going to have Zn SO4 to form is an arrow, then potassium sulfate. Now, again, I want to make sure that I write this formula correctly, so I know potassium is K plus 1. Sulfate is SO4 minus 2, and I'm going to make sure to cross these down. So my formula here is going to be K2SO4. And then finally it says and zinc, so plus ZN. The next thing that I want to do is balance this. I look at this and I say, okay, 1K, 2Ks. So I'm going to need to put a 2 in front of here. So that K and that K is balanced. Let's look at the zinc. ZN, ZN, that's balanced. And here's my sulfate, 1SO4 polyatomic, 1SO4 polyatomic. Hey, we're balanced, not that bad. Now what I'm going to do is assign oxidation numbers. K is going to be 0, ZN is going to be plus 2. The SO4 I'm not going to touch, it's a polyatomic and not going to be involved in this redox reaction. K is going to be plus 1, and then finally ZN is going to be 0 as it's by itself. So what's being oxidized here? K is going from 0 to plus 1. So that is what's going to be oxidized. So I'm going to bring my coefficients down with me. 2K yields, this subscript right here I'm going to bring up as a coefficient because I'm representing this as an ion. So 2K plus 1 plus this is a zero over here. So we're going to lose a total of two electrons as each potassium atom, as it becomes an ion, will lose its one valence electron. Then we're going to go over to the zinc. Zn plus 2 to Zn0. Zn plus 2 is going to gain some number of electrons and become Zn0. As zinc goes from an ion to an atom, it's going to gain two electrons. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my little stair step in, like this, and I'm going to cancel my electrons. So two electrons lost, two electrons gained, and then I'm going to add these two half reactions together. So I'm going to write 2K0 plus Zn plus 2 yields 2K plus 1 plus Zn0. And as a result, I have my net ionic equation. Now I want you to stop, read this one over, try it on your own, see how far you get, and if you complete it, great. If not, come back to the video, get some help, check your work. Welcome back, let's see how you did. Magnesium metal reacts with iron 2 nitrate to produce magnesium nitrate and iron metal. Let's start out by translating. Magnesium metal, that's going to be Mg, reacts with iron 2 nitrate. Now iron is Fe. They give me the charge for iron here, which is critical. That's plus 2. The nitrate is going to be NO3 minus 1. So when I cross this down, so plus, I'm going to have Fe NO3 2 to produce magnesium nitrate. So again, let's take a moment here and say, okay, magnesium is Mg plus 2, nitrate is NO3 minus 1. So again, I'm going to be really careful about crossing here. So Mg NO3 2 plus iron metal, Fe. So I'm going to check and see if I need to balance it, which in this case I don't think I do, 
but mg, 1mg, 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 1fe, 1fe, 2 nitrates, 2 nitrates, and I'm all balanced. So now what I want to do is go in and assign oxidation numbers. So mg is going to be 0. Fe, if I uncrisscross it, is going to be plus 2. mg over here is going to be plus 2. And Fe is going to be 0. The nitrate, like I said before, is going to be a spectator ion. It's not involved in the redox reaction. Therefore, it will not show up in our net ionic equation. So mg is going from 0 to plus 2. So when we write the half reaction, it's going to be mg0 to mg plus 2 yields 2 electrons. And then Fe plus 2 is going to be reduced. We're going to gain some number of electrons to become Fe0. Fe plus 2 ion to Fe0, that means we're going to gain 2 electrons. Charge is conserved, two electrons lost, two electrons gained. So I'm going to put my stair step in to divide my two half reactions in half. I'm going to cancel my electrons, and then I'm going to rewrite what is left over. Mg0 plus Fe plus 2 yields Mg plus 2 plus Fe0. And again, I have my net ion equation. Now we're going to look at how to balance a redox reaction when given only the atoms and ions changing oxidation states. So this is a little bit different. They're not going to give you a full-blown chemical equation that you can say to yourself, oh, I know how to balance that. I'm good at balancing. This requires a little bit more time and effort. So Cu plus Ag plus 1 yields Cu plus 2 plus Ag. And there's assumed charges of zero up here because these are metals by themselves. So it's not overly apparent how to balance these. Again, we're going to look at these and we're just going to identify the elements oxidized and reduced. If I look at Cu here, Cu is going from zero to plus two. That's going to be oxidized because the copper atom is becoming more positive. The Ag plus one is going to Ag zero that's becoming more negative. Ag plus one is going to be reduced. So if I write what's oxidized here, I'm going to say Cu zero is going to Cu plus two and losing two electrons, while Ag plus one is gonna gain one electron and become Ag zero. So I look at that and I say, all right, does everything match? Cu zero, Cu plus two, two electrons lost, Ag plus one, Ag zero, I can see that one electron's gained. Now, unlike the other situations before where we had the number of electrons lost automatically equaling the number of electrons gained, we've got to manipulate this a little bit. So we're going to balance the half reaction by multiplying them out so the number of electrons are equal. So if I look at 2 and 1, I know that for the number of electrons to be equal as they're lost and gained, I'm going to need to multiply this whole reduction half reaction by 2. So I'm going to recopy the top. So Cu0 yields Cu plus 2 plus 2 electrons. Now what I'm going to do here is basically I'm going to multiply this entire half reaction by 2 everything in this half reaction. So as a result, I'm going to have 2Ag plus 1 plus 2 electrons yields 2Ag0. And now I can see that charge is conserved. The number of electrons lost has equaled the number of electrons that are gained. Now I'm going to go on to the next step. So here's my two balanced half reactions. Cu0 is going to Cu plus 2 and losing 2 electrons. Then 2Ag plus 1 plus 2 electrons is going to 2Ag0. Now what I want to do is basically cut these two half reactions in half, cancel the electrons, and add the two half reactions together. And finally, we're going to rewrite the equation as a net ionic equation. So I'm going to take whatever's left 
over on the reactant side and whatever's left over on the product side and put them together as a net ionic equation. So that means this is going to be Cu0 plus 2Ag plus 1 yields Cu plus 2 plus 2Ag0. And I have a balanced net ionic equation. Now again, I want you to stop, see if you can do this one, come back and check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. We have Al0 plus Mn plus 7 yields Al plus 3 plus Mn plus 2. So Al is going from 0 to plus 3. So I'm going to write Al0, Al plus 3, and we know that's going to lose 3 electrons. Now Mn is going from plus 7 to plus 2, so definitely being reduced. And if we look at a number line and we figure it out, we can see that the difference between the plus 7 and the plus 2 is the gain of 5 electrons. So now what I want to do is say to myself, all right, I'm losing 3 electrons, but I'm gaining 5 electrons. The lowest number that both of these can divide into equally is 15. So that means I'm going to have to multiply the oxidation half reaction by 5, and I'm going to have to multiply the reduction half reaction by 3. So when I rewrite this, it's going to be 5Al0 yields 5Al plus 3, don't touch the charge, plus 15 electrons. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the reduction half reaction. 3Mn plus 7 plus 15 electrons yields 3Mn plus 2. So now again, I'm going to put in my stair step. I'm going to cancel my electrons, and I'm going to add these two half reactions together. 5Al0 plus 3Mn plus 7 yields 5Al plus 3 plus 3Mn plus 2. Yeah! Awesome! Balanced net ionic equation. So what did we learn? Well, we went over the definition of a net ionic equation. We talked about how to write net ionic equations. We did a little practice. And then we balanced some more net ionic equations using only atoms and ions. And then we did some more practice at the end. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.